Hey amigos, welcome back to our YouTube channel. What's up everyone? Hope you're all doing well. So today's video will be about the best 5 cameras for beginners. So without any further delay, let's jump straight into the video. Best Mirrorless, Nikon Z50. This is the first generation Z-mount DX mirrorless camera with an APS-C sensor. Announced on October 10th, 2019, together the two compact DX lenses, specifically designed for the camera, packs many attractive features, putting it above entry-level DSLRs like Nikon D3500 and D5600. With its price point at $860 MSRP, it competes head-to-head -head with other mirrorless options on the market such as Sony A6400, Fuji X-T30, and Canon EOS M6 Mark II. I had the chance to test this Nikon Z50 with two DX lenses during the past three months of traveling in the US and the Middle East, so this review reflects extensive shooting experiences in the field. Sporting a 20.9 megapixel DX sensor, fast phase detection autofocus system, 11 frames per second continuous shooting speed, ability to record high quality 4K video at up to 30 frames per second without any crop, full HD slow motion at up to 120 frames per second, and a compact lightweight construction with great body build and ergonomics, this camera is undoubtedly a severe camera to consider for new and existing Nikon shooters. The two Z-mount DX lenses launched with the camera 16 to 50 mm VR and the DX 50 to 250 mm VR are both attractive choices for those who want to keep their camera kit small and lightweight. But for those who want more lens options, there are plenty of excellent Z-mount full frame lenses already available, as well as older Nikon F lenses, both DX and FX, using the FTZ adapter. While testing out the camera, I purposefully limited myself to only two DX kit zoom lenses that the camera came with, so that I can demonstrate their capabilities and see if they are sufficient for most day-to-day -day needs of photographers. Best DSLR, Canon EOS Rebel T8i. Known as the EOS 850D outside of the US, this is a rare beast, a new DSLR. We don't often get to test new DSLRs these days, especially at this entry-level price point. And only once do we get one do we see just how little progress or innovation there has been. In terms of technology and features, this feels a few steps behind the best beginner mirrorless cameras. Tellingly, like the rival DSLRs, such as Nikon D5600 and Pentax K70, are both four years old now. Yes, this is a very modest update of the three-year-old Canon EOS Rebel T7i EOS 800D, the most notable addition being 4K video, and in reality the 4K video mode is hindered by some big limitations. Easy to use, Nikon D3500. This might be well over three years old, but it remains our number one pick for the title of best beginner DSLR. Why so? While this is partly down to the lack of new competition, most manufacturers have stopped making new DSLRs. It's also because the D3500 nails the basics in a way that few other cameras have managed. For starters, it delivers the three big advantages that DSLRs offer over their mirrorless alternatives. A superb battery life, great handling, and good value. The latter is partly because the D3500 has an optical viewfinder, unlike the EVFs found on mirrorless rivals, but also because its huge range of native lenses are no longer new enough to command high price tags. While the D3500's age counts in its favor when it comes to price, it does mean it lacks some modern features. The first is a lack of 4K video capture, which is now standard on most new cameras. Although, if you're happy with 1080p resolution, or you're not that interested in video at all, that shouldn't bother you too much. Perhaps more limiting are the lack of articulation screen and touchscreen functionality, which means the D3500 will take a little adjusting for those coming from smartphones. If you think a touchscreen is a deal breaker, then it's worth considering alternatives like the Canon EOS Rebel SL3 EOS 250D, or a mirrorless camera like the Fujifilm X-T200. Best Compact, Canon PowerShot G7 X Mark III. The Mark II was a compact and well-liked camera, one that presented a handful of key improvements over the previous G7 model. The Mark III improves things even further with stronger video specs, speed-related enhancements, and a handful of further tweaks. While it falls behind some of its Sony RX100 series rivals in a few areas, the lack of an EVF and its more basic AF system, for example, features like the 30 frames per second raw burst mode and in-camera raw processing show it to have a few advantages too. While you can get a Sony RX100 series model with a mic port, this feature is confined to the RX100 7 right now, which is considerably more expensive than the PowerShot G7 X Mark III. Some may have also hoped for a viewfinder, 
Although for that, there's always the PowerShot G5 X Mark III, which mirrors much of the specs here. So the Mark III ends up carving out something of a niche for itself in a busy sector on the market. It's capable of nice images and very good videos, and it's backed up by a strong secondary set of features, from speedy burst shooting to EOS-style control and many physical controls. It's not without some very capable rivals that managed to outgun it here, but when you consider what it offers for the money, it shows itself to be a very capable all-arounder. Best Budget Canon EOS M50 Mark II The Mark II is a puzzling one. It's a feature-rich camera by itself, but most of those specs are already available on the original EOS M50, with only a few added benefits to indicate it's an updated model. The Mark II is identical to its predecessor, both internally and externally. What's new is all software-based, and could be a great significance to up-and-coming content creators. There's the added benefit of eye detect autofocus for both stills and video, and the ability to shoot vertical videos for social media platforms. Another advantage the Mark II offers over the older camera is a new video recording button available on the touchscreen and a movie self-timer that gives you between 2 to 10 seconds to prepare yourself before the camera starts to record. If you happen to have over 1,000 YouTube subscribers, the Mark II will also allow you to wirelessly livestream to YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you loved it. Take a moment to hit the bell icon so you'll get notified of all our new latest uploads.